and we're off to the races. So this one says, energy method. That's nice that they tell you that. Do not expect for life to give you, in real life, you're not going to know. In real life, you're going to look at the situation, look at your variables, and then you're going to you're gonna have to figure out what you got to do. But this is nice. She told you to use the energy method. That's cute. Um, so she says, the uh, M kilogram crate is subject to the forces shown if it's originally at rest and the coefficient of, um, well, that's important, originally at rest. I like to highlight the stuff that's important. Originally at rest means that the velocity is zero. It was zero, yeah. Coefficient of kinetic friction, which is important. Um, this, is, this is my rule. If they tell you just cut the coefficient of kinetic friction, that means the object's going to be moving. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they tell you the static and the and the kinetic, that means you have to test to see if the object is moving. Ninety percent of your problems are just going to give you coefficient of kinetic friction, though. Cool. Yeah, I've never seen a static like. Uh, yeah. So that's something that you'll see more in statics, but in dynamics, is perfectly feasible for me to give you a statics problem and say solve it because dynamics statics is a special case of dynamics. So um, I, I, I've been known to do that once in a long while. I'd be like, oh, just test to see if this is moving or not, because you got to be able to, to do that. All right. M equals the last two digits in your ID. So what's the last two digits of your ID? Mine is 71, but we could do uh, whatever numbers. But uh, right. mine is 71. Let's just do 50 because... Um, it's easier. Just, yeah, it's easier. So we'll say mass equals 50 kg. All right. Uh, determine the friction on the plate. That's the first thing we want to do. Um, so the friction on the crate is going to be, all right, so here's, here's the thing. Does, does the kinetic friction ever change? Does the kinetic friction ever change? Yeah. Mm, no, I mean, it stays constant, right? I mean, it stays no, no, constant. No, it does change. You're right. No, you're right. You're right. It stays constant. The static friction changes. Static friction can go from anywhere to zero, from zero to a maximum value based on what's happening to it, right? But the thing is, once you overpower static friction's maximum value, it then defaults to kinetic friction, which is a constant number. So when it says find the kinetic friction, we're just going to say kinetic friction. Uh, how do they friction? And I'll put a little K here. Kinetic friction, do you know the equation for it? Mm, isn't it like mu K times the mass or something like that? Almost. Mu K times the normal force. Oh, yeah, normal. Okay. okay. But so then, quick question. So then, like, if you go to the other question, I think it says something about like the conservation of energy, right? Yeah. And I know that if the question has a friction in it, and that's a variable thing, like a friction coefficient, you can't apply conservation of energy, right? Yes, you can. It's not conservation okay. anymore, but you can apply energy to it. Okay, but it's not that. It's not that specific rule. I was making sure my teacher, I didn't mess up what she was saying. Okay. Yeah. See, what happens is when when students are learning the work energy method, the professors make it way more difficult than it needs to be. Like, it's kind of dumb what professors do, because what they're trying to do is they're trying to give a really, really, really impressive detailing of energy. But the thing is, most people actually inherently understand energy. And so you don't actually have to do that much to make them understand it mathematically. And professors do all of this work and it actually ends up confusing the students. Whereas what I do is I, I literally break down that whole chapter into like one equation. I start with everything at this maximum difficulty from the beginning because students actually inherently understand energy without you having to do all of that extra. So um, a lot of times professors will start to detail, oh, this is conservation of energy. This is not conservation. That doesn't matter. I'm not gonna lie, that, that does not matter. All you need to know is that it's work energy and then everything else, I teach you how to kind of go about thinking about it so you can get the answers. You don't have to worry about if it's conservation or not. That's not important. So. This value right here is going to be constant. We just got to figure out what this is, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you the answer because I'm going to tell you like this. You see how this block right here, this block right here is um, horizontal? Mm -hmm. Whenever an object is perfectly horizontal, I mean, that's zero degrees. Whenever the object is zero degrees, the normal friction is going to be equal to mass times gravity. Mm -hmm. Mass times gravity, not zero. All right. Now, obviously, I'm giving you that very specific. So I'm going to say mass times gravity, and it's going to be because the object is horizontal. Because mm -hmm. horizontal. If it's not horizontal, you cannot just say that. And you're going to have a lot of students who go, oh, yeah. And they'll say it like this. It'll be on a, on a slope. And let's say that's 30 degrees. They'll go, oh, yeah, it's, um, the normal force is mass times gravity. Normal force is not mass times gravity for this situation. OK? So what happens is let's do a free body diagram for both of these. I'm going to move this over real quick, just so you can see why. All right, technically you're supposed to be able to prove this. And so I got to show you this just in case. So you have one force acting on it like this. Then you have the other mm -hmm. force acting on it like that. Cool. 
Um, so those are outside forces. Those are external forces. I always like to put those last on my free body diagram, but it doesn't matter what which forces you put as long as you remember that there are four types of forces, okay? There are four yeah. types. Type one, weight. Don't. Type one is weight. Type two are your normal forces. Type three are your... um. Hold on, I'm thinking. Type three is your um no 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 because th this breaks down into like very very simple everything falls into these so weight normal forces then you're gonna have externals and then type four is gonna be the reactions to your externals okay those are the only four forces that you're gonna experience in a free body diagram period every other force that you can think of fits inside of those four forces okay so I like to actually go in order. So I go, okay, first and foremost is weight. I've been known to not put the weight by mistake. So the weight would be 50 times 9.8. All right. And then you get your normal force. Your normal force. Your normal force has to be perpendicular to the plane of interaction. What does that mean? So if I look at the box, the box is resting. Let me make this thicker. The box is resting on this line right here like that. You see it? The normal force has to point into that line. It has to point into the line that represents where the box is resting. So in this case, normal force is actually going to point up. You following me? Mm -hmm. All right, great. So you got the normal force pointing up. So that was that was one and then two. So this is one. This is two. So now three would be these guys because they're external forces. You see that? Mm -hmm. So external forces would be anything that's pushing or pulling it. So you have tension. Actually, tension will be a reaction. So you have basically any forces that are pushing and pulling it. So any thrust, any pushing motions, anything like that, those are external forces. And the last one is the reactions to those external forces. So what that looks like in our situation is friction, okay? So friction for this first guy right here, friction's gonna um, point backward to the direction that it wants to move. Not the direction of the force, but the direction that it's moving. Does that make some sense? Yeah. So I, have, I love tricking students. What I'll do is I'll make this object, I'll make this object have a velocity like that, and then I'll put the forces on it, and I'll screw the students over, because students will put that the friction is actually going this way, and that's wrong. Friction is backward to the motion that is um is being had. So what happens yeah, is this object the surface. exactly this object is not moving. It has zero velocity. So what you do when the object has zero velocity is then you make friction just go backward to the forces. So in this case, friction's gonna, friction always has to be on the plane of interaction as well. So you know how to put friction sideways instead of slanted. I'm not gonna do friction like that. That's not how that works. Friction has to be associated with the normal force. So the normal force is on that, um, that purple line. Friction has to also be on that purple line. So friction goes with the line. Normal force goes perpendicular to the line. Make some sense? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So friction's actually gonna have both. Friction's gonna come from this guy and from this guy. You following me? Mm -hmm. But they're both pointing sure forward. One more time. Friction. Right, so, right, right. No, you're good. Friction mm -hmm. comes from that guy. Mm -hmm. So he points forward. Friction has to point back, but it has to stay on the plane. And he's also going to interact with that guy. Both of those are going to produce friction. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, both of those are going forward. So friction, I'm just going to put a little double arrow there. I just know that friction is going to point backward. Cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So. We know the equation for friction. This is going to be kinetic friction because they don't say anything about static friction. That's your trick. They say nothing about static friction. Assume it's kinetic. And that's going to be that. Right? Yeah. Actually, I messed up. Normal force is not going to be MG. I messed you up. See, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, have, tried to, I shouldn't have tried to be fancy about it because I didn't look at the, uh, the other forces. I would have ruined you, actually. So I'm just going to show you how to work this from the beginning. From here, once you put all of your... Um, once you put all of your um your 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 stuff, you're gonna draw your kinetic diagram. A lot of students forget to draw the kinetic diagram. I'm gonna erase this. A lot of students forget to draw the kinetic diagram, and I guess that's fine in the beginning. But when you get to stuff that's rotating and stuff like that, you're gonna need your kinetic diagram like badly. So with the kinetic diagram, all you're doing is you're gonna put the mass and what you think the resultant acceleration is. So mass times the uh, resultant acceleration. I'm just gonna put ax. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all you're saying is that all of these forces right here add up to this guy. That's all you're saying. So this is the conglomeration of that. It's literally F equals MA. Sum of all forces equals MA. 
Literally, it's just the picture version. So this is the sum of all forces, and this is MA. Cool? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Easy. So now that you have that, you just have to break it into directions because when you're dealing with vectors, you got to go into directions. So you got to say sum of all forces in the X and then sum of all forces in the Y. Follow me? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's do the X ones. The X ones are um, going to be like this. I think I'll do it at um, uh, what color do I want to use? Let's use pink thing, whatever. Let's use this pink. All right. So let's break it down. So we got to put all the X versions. All the X versions of the force look like this. So those guys have to be broken into the X components. So if you look at it, you got one, sorry, you got one, two, three forces in the X direction. Make some sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So you just add them up. You add them up. Um, you get to choose whatever your um, coordinate system is going to be and the direction that it's going to go. So for me, I like to, this is my personal way of doing it. I like to make whatever the resultant is positive. That's me. You don't have to do that. And there are going to be problems where you can't do that, right? But when I can, I make the resultant positive. So I'm just going to say that, um, I'm just going to say that this direction is positive X. And I'm going to say that this direction is positive Y. You following me? Mm-hmm. I always like to just put it over the arrow. That's just what how you're watching me do this is literally how I solve it. The only thing is I'm talking. Otherwise, I would have already been done. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is exactly how I would kind of go about doing it. OK, so that's my coordinate system. So now I just got to um, take into account what's going on here. So let me move this three out of the way so I can get a visual. So that's 500, right? So I got 500. This purple line right here is going to be 500 cosine of 45. So it's positive. I got 500. Cosine of 45, uh, so that's going to be 500 of square root of 2, right? Mm -hmm. So from there, that's going to be the expert. That's going to be one of them. Then I'm going to do this purple guy. So that's going to be a 200 cosine of 30 plus 200 cosine of 30. I don't know what that is. I'll figure it out in a second. 200 cosine of 30. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to need, last but not least, the friction. So then you got to subtract the friction because uh, the friction is negative, right? It's pointing backward. Yeah. So I'm do minus the force of friction. Put the force of friction right here. And I know that's going to be mu K times N. You follow me? Mm -hmm. That all has to equal not zero, but MA. Because remember, the left side is on the left side of the equation. The right side is on the right side of the equation. So this goes on this side. You follow me? Yeah. Being able to do that is super important. A lot of students default to statics mode and they'll put equal to zero and that's wrong and they'll fail. So just put MA and if you want to put a little X, you can put a little X. Okay. Mm -hmm. Easy peasy. I cannot solve this though. Why? Because I have one, two unknowns. I need my second equation. The good thing is that's what the Y equation is for. Cool? Yep. All right. So generally speaking, typically 90% of the time, the X is going to solve for this guy and the Y is going to solve for the normal force. OK, 90 percent of the time, not always, just most often. That's just the way it works. OK, I can never tell you it's always going to work like that because dynamics applies to everything. And because it applies to everything, there are always going to be exceptions. I can always build you a problem that gives me that gives you the exception to screw you over, which is what I'm known to do, because I like I like for my students to know every little detail. But um, so that's going to be the X part. Do you have any questions? Mm -mm. All right, cool. Right, we look at, right. Awesome. Now we look at the Y guys. So we got the weight going down. We got the normal force going up. Then we're going to have, uh, let me put it a little bit thinner. Then we're going to have the Y component of the 500 and the Y component of the three. And notice how I had to do that. The 500 is pointing up, but the three, but the 200 is pointing down. You see what I'm, you see what happened there? Mm -hmm. That's purely based on the vector. Dynamics is about understanding vectors graphically very well and also algebraically very well. If you don't understand vectors to their fullest when it comes down to how to represent them, how to you know pull out directions and how to manipulate them, you're not going to do well in this class. Because um, like we saw before, there's, a, there's an aspect of trigonometry that goes on top of it. So please make sure you pay attention to directions and, and, and writing those directions properly. So we said for the y direction, up is positive. So let's start with the, um, I'm just going to go right to left. Let me see if I can move back space. Boom, boom, boom. All right. We're just going to go uh, right to left. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one right here. 
Uh, so that's going to be 500 sine of 45, which is another 500 over the square root of 2. Mm -hmm. okay. That's positive. Then right. we're going to look at the, uh, yep, exactly. Then you're going to look at the weight, which is negative. So minus the mass times gravity, which is 50 times 9.8. Okay. Then you're going to do the normal force, which we don't know. We don't know what it is, so we're going to leave it as a variable. Plus, because it's up, normal force. Remember, that's what mm -hmm. we're solving for. And then finally, we're going to go down 200 sine of 30. Exactly. And so what is this all going to equal to? That's the real question. What is this all going to equal to? That's the big question. Equals what? Uh, I mean, I want to say zero, but I could be wrong. You're right. It's zero. But why is it zero? Because it's perpendicular to the surface. So there is no like um, F, F of Y acting on the, the body at this moment or something like that. I, I forgot exactly what she meant. You're close, but that's not full. That's not the full example. And so what's going to happen is you're going to have professors who want you to say it the way that they say it. I'm not looking at you to say it the way I say it, but I can also tell what you're saying. Like, I'm going to listen to what you're saying and then judge that. So if what you're saying is right, but it's not the way I'm saying it, I'm going to tell you you're right. But if what you're saying is st slightly wrong, I'm going to let you know that there's, you know, that there's mishaps to it. I'm not really particular on the way you say it, because as long as I know that you get it, I know that you get it. So you're almost right. If you look at the left side, remember, the left side is going to be equivalent to that. Everything that we drew became numbers. All right. Mm -hmm. So if the left side of the equation is the is the left picture, then the right side of the equation is going to correspond to the right picture. You see that? Mm -hmm. And so what you're going to do, and this is how you always do it, even when you get to um, if you want to go to 3D objects or you want to get into rotation, uh, which you're probably going to start seeing in about two weeks, you're going to start seeing rotation. Um, you're still going to do this exact I mean, same thing. Like we worked on rotational stuff last week, right? I no, no. I mean, I mean, rotation of free body diagrams. Okay. Yeah, so you, you looked at rotational motion. Now you got to, next you're going to look at what causes rotational motion, which is how the forces turn into rotation. And that's going to go right back into free body diagrams. And you're going to have another equation called the moment equation. So you're going to do these two, and then you're going to do, it's going to be another one that looks like this. And you're going to do some stuff for it. But that's for, that's for another day. Okay? I mean, that's not like, that's not in, in, impulse and moment. That's not the same. No, that's not the same. That's not the same. So the point is, if you look at your, um, if you look at your picture, there is nothing mm -hmm. pointing up or down on your picture. And because there's mm -hmm. nothing pointing up or down on your picture, you say that there's nothing happening on the right side of the equation, which is zero. That's the reason why. That's the simplest way to say it. Cool? Yep. All right, cool. Let me get my calculator, and then I'm going to solve for n, which ain't no thing. Mind you, we're doing all of this because we want to solve for n. Oh, n was purple. We want to solve for n. So we can plug it back in. So we can plug it back into this guy. Exactly. So um, let's solve for n real quick. n is going to be equal to 200 cosine of 30 plus. I'm just going to say 500. I'm going to just default this to 10 because I'm lazy. You already know that gravity is mm -hmm. 9.8. When I know the student knows it's 9.8, I just use 10 because it makes life easy for me. It's not about It's not about anything. It's not about the calculations. It's, it's about just, the it's conceptual. Um, exactly. So... Oh, dude, I messed up. Watch, look at this. I messed up. And I don't, I don't want you to um, make the same mistake. I put cosine here, but I was supposed to put sine. Mm -hmm. So make sure you catch that. Because if you put cosine in the calculator, you're going to mess it up. Um, generally, the x gets the cosine and the y gets the sine, but do not ever assume that. Never assume that. Always use your picture. Always use your picture. All right, so that would be my normal force. I mean, wait, how, would a picture tell, how would the picture tell you whether to use sine or cosine? Easy. Let me show you. If I were to put this at an angle, right, and let's say this is 30 degrees, let's do the same exact stuff, except I'm not going to solve it all the way through. Let's look at the mass. Oh, make a triangle. Okay. Yeah, mg is going to be 1. Then the f is going to be here. Then the friction is going to point that way. The normal mm -hmm. is actually not going to point up. A lot of students will draw like that. That's wrong. The normal has to point perpendicular to this line. You follow me? Just mm -hmm. like I had to make friction go up the line, the normal has to always be perpendicular to that, to that line. So that's actually normal. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And in this case, the normal is actually going to have some cosine and some sine to it. So what happens is uh, if you ever get stuck on that, I'll show you if you want to how to go from one coordinate system to another, how to go from X, Y to like a secondary X, Y. Because what happens is this, the black, um, the black coordinate system is actually going to be the coordinate system that you want to use. But if you know, 
this guy's not on that coordinate system and this guy's not on that coordinate system. So I'll call it coordinate system mapping to go from one coordinate system to another to basically shift your um, things by the proper angle. Um, if you ever get stuck on that, uh, let me know. We'll just do a quick um, one, two, three on that. And then that'll be that. But that's that's what would happen. But because of that, these two guys are going to get cosigned and signed in a way that may not be apparent to you. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it turns out that to go to the Y axis, let me just put the little dotted line so you can see it a little bit better. To go to the Y axis, this is actually my 30. And I'll show you how to do that later. And so to go to the X axis, to go on the X, this would actually be my uh, sign. So for the weight, the X would be sine and the Y would be cosine. It'd be flipped as compared to how we normally do it. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say don't assume that the X is cosine and the Y is sine. You have to solve it because in this specific case that we're talking about right here, the X is actually sine and the Y is cosine. And that's just because of the way that it's drawn. That's what I mean by you got to look at your picture. Cool? Yep. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, I'm not actually going to erase that. I want to move that over so that you can just have that visual. And I'll pop it off to the side so that when you're looking at these uh, notes, then you'll just kind of have that arbitrarily somewhere. All right, because that's really, really important. Okay. So let's continue what we're talking about. I got to solve this bad boy. We're going to do um, 200 cosine of 30 uh, plus 500 minus. 500 sine of 45. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. We get three, roughly 320. Roughly 320 newtons. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now that I've solved for my normal force, all I got to do is plug back in. They didn't really ask me for this right here, so I don't really care. I'm not work. I'm not working on that. I'm going to just directly plug it back into this to get my answer. You follow me? Mm-hmm. I did this equation just so that you could see both equations happening together. I know that to get the normal, I would have automatically done the Y equation, but that, that's something that comes with experience. And so I got to still walk with you through certain little things. So I'm actually going to put this in purple on the line of the purple and then just put um, 0.2 because that's my UK times 320, which would be um, 64. And that'd be Newtons. And that's the force of your, uh, of your friction. You follow me? Mm -hmm. And that's that. That's the first one. Easy peasy.